Amen. Thank you, Kim, for welcoming us to All Saints Sunday as we gather this Sunday in particularly remembering those ancestors of faith who have gone before us to make this day possible. As we join in worship, there are yellow prayer cards at the front at the entrance of the sanctuary. Um, and so if you would like to have your prayers shared uh, later on in this service, please write that down for us. And for those of you who are viewing online, please type that in a comment section. And then also for everyone, I have a new cell phone number now, and I'm really sorry to do this. I know this kind of thing is annoying. Um, and I've already started texting some of you from it. Um, but for those who want to send in prayers for today's service and in general, it's also on the back of your bulletin. Um, but it is 612-449-9405. I'm officially Minnesotan. 612. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited about it too. 449-9405. And again, that's printed in the back of the bulletin and that top header on the very last page. So if you have any joys or concerns to send in, please um, do so. And then also, this we are celebrating Stewardship Sunday as we prepare for our ministry in the coming year. And if um, you would like to give an estimate of giving, there are blank cards um, in the back on the green table as well. And so thank you for everything that you have done and are doing and will do to make our ministries possible here. So in this Sunday, we gather, as we do every Sunday, to remember that we serve a living God, to remember that no matter what has happened or what has failed to happen in this past week, there is a God who is working to bring forth life from death and wholeness from brokenness. This is our good news. This is the foundation of comfort and of salvation on which we stand and move and have our being. So would you rise in body or in spirit and join in the call to worship? We are the church that lives into God's future today. A church that lives by the work of God in Christ that was, is now, and is still to come. The one who is seated on the throne says to us, See, I am making all things new. A new heaven and a new earth, where the home of God is among God's people. Thanks be to God. as we pray together with them. May we not fail in the oil of comfort, the wine of justice, the involvement of the patient mule, and the generosity which, having given, promises more 
until recovery is complete. Amen. Would you please be seated? The Bible reading for today is Revelation 21, 1 through 6a. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, made as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, All is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will freely give water from the life-giving spring. This is the word of God for the people of God. This passage is absolutely one of my favorites in all of scripture and became even more so when I took a course on Revelation in seminary and for the first time found out a possibility of interpreting it in seeing it and all apocalyptic literature as a way um, to help people find hope in the midst of hopeless times, a way to find courage to live a future reality in a present that that is anything but. And so for a people in the early church under Roman occupation and oppression, there's all kinds of parallels in Revelation, not as a guidebook for the end of the world, but as a way to name in vivid and captivating image, imagination and in imagery what is happening um, that people are going through now and to find a way to keep the faith in the midst of all of those obstacles and in the midst um, of that crushing hopelessness. And, and so as we read in this line of, of a, an entire book dedicated to helping us find the courage and find the perseverance and find the hope needed to live a future that is very different from the present we are experiencing, we look. And what a promise it would be. Think of everything that we have gone through in the pandemic, both health pandemic and justice pandemic, to hear and to see God on the throne, to see God in control, not just to keep saying it over and over, God is in control and God provides, but to see God on the throne saying, look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. God will dwell with them. They will be God's people, and God and God's glory will be with them. And not just this magnificent, universal, cosmic being on a throne, but then one who is so close and near and coming to wipe away every tear from our eyes, to swallow up death. Death shall be no more. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain, for the former things have passed away. And as a person um, who is not particularly known for her patience and for waiting well, I love the promise of this scripture. And, and I know that when loved ones pass, that they are on the other side of the river, as we say, or in the community of saints, and that the love of God connects us still all together. But my 
gosh, would I love to give my grandma a hug and not have to wait for that anymore. And to be able to share in presence and to share in that closeness um, and in that life-giving love and power. And this is exactly what this scripture promises. For as much as we're going through with masks and with increased positivity rates and everything that's happening, there will be something that is made new. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. And know that reality is not yet present today. But there is a God who is seated on the throne, who is the Alpha and the Omega. And so what does it mean for us as people of faith to live that reality now, even though it's not yet fully here, and thus give God and the Holy Spirit just a little bit more room to work to make that reality come all the quicker as thy will, God, is done on earth as it is in heaven. This is why we are gathered here on both All Saints and Stewardship Sunday, because this is the gift that our ancestors of faith have given us, and this is our call to continue to give to those who will follow after us to give what we can, to live how we can, so that a future reality can become that much more present, that much more quickly. And so as we look to our ancestors of faith, we absolutely look to the founder of United Methodism. Jasmine, is there any way you remember this from confirmation? There's a slide that just popped up that can help you out. Shout it out. John Wesley. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Thanks for being a good sport. Um, and so John Wesley is the founder of United Methodism and um, probably one of the most uh, prophetic um, and faithful persons that I have encountered in terms of how to live financially in a way that makes that room for Holy Spirit uh, to work. So here's what John Wesley did. Um, when he started out in Oxford in 1731, he was making 30 pounds a year. And there is a um, famous story that he had just bought a few picture frames and was also quite enjoying his tobacco and his brandy that he was spending his money on when a chambermaid came in with a really thin linen um, he couldn't even call it a coat. And it was cold out, and that's all she had. And so he reached into his pocket to pull out some change to give her for buying a coat and didn't have any because he had just bought the picture frames. And in that moment was struck to his core um, and convinced that um, God could not say, well done, you good and faithful servant, in that moment. Um, and that he had failed God and failed that woman. Um, and so in, in that, he redid his budget, um, and he keeps an exact ledger for 80, um, until he is 86 years old of everything that he um, bought or gave away. And so he began living on 28 pounds. And just so that we know, for that time, like a, one person could very comfortably live on 30 pounds a year. And so he took two pounds off so he would have that to give away. And then in the following years, as you can see, his salary doubles and he does not increase his standard or his experience of living at all so that the only thing that increases is his giving so that then he is able to give away 32 pounds a year then 92 pounds a year and then um, this keeps going for so long go ahead into the next slide that at one point he's making 1400 pounds a year and still only living on 28 and it's to the point where he gets investigated in 1776, his tax return. There are commissioners that come to his home to search it because they are convinced that a man of his means must have plate somewhere, meaning must have taken some of his money and made it into a silver plate so that he didn't have to report it and be taxed on it. Um, and then he very proudly says, I have two silver spoons here in London and in Bristol, and that is all the plate that I have, gentlemen. Um, and so 
it's this moment of what does it mean to be that countercultural that no one could understand, even, even the tax commissioners, of how this could be happening and how someone could be this committed in their life um, to living their faith in such a way. And so for John Wesley, the three famous um, words for how to approach our financial life is to earn all you can. This is not someone who has skewed money or thought it was bad. In fact, I learned something new in my research for this um, sermon. And the article that I read um, had John Wesley's net worth at probably being equivalent to $50 million today. Other sites that I looked up had somewhere around $2 million. But it's not that money in and of itself is bad. It's a very good thing. And for John Wesley, it was like Christians should earn all they can because that means there are people of faith who are committed to giving and using that money, not for their own needs, but to take care of the needs of those around them. And so you earn all you can. Um, and also uh, another note of the progressivism and the insight of this founder is that he also asked that that earning not come at the expense or harm of anyone else. And so this is also partly what led to, um, in a hundred years, a split of the United Methodist Church over slavery, because John Wesley was so against slavery and asked that no one make any earning um, that harmed anyone else. And so that included not only slavery, but workers' well-being and workers' rights and their fair wages and pay, as well as the environment. And think of that in terms of he is serving in the time of the Industrial Revolution and bringing environmental concerns at that point in time. And so as we earn all, the, all that we can in ways that don't harm others or the environment around us, then his next um, request is that we save all we can, that we take care of our families, that we take care of the creditors um, and businesses around us, and that and that saving and that focus help us um, to not go beyond um, what we absolutely need for living. There's a, um, help me, who's the guy that does Financial Peace University? Ah, there's a financial, um, very famous right now, and I'm completely blanking on his name. But the way he says this, save all you can, is that if you can't live on 90% of your income, then you probably can't live on 100% either. And so how do we stay and live within our means so that we have um, money to give to others in needs? Because as much as there will always be people who have more than us, there will also always be people who have less than us. And the call of faith and the spiritual discipline of giving is to pay more attention to the many who have less than us than the few who have more and getting caught up in um, especially what is in today's culture, um, ads that bombard us every day telling us how we will be happy um, with if we just have this or if we just have that. And so John Wesley warns against chasing that kind of if and if then and instead relying on faith and on God to give us our peace, to be the one who is in control and the one who is providing. And so as we look um, this coming year to look at what our family needs and what our creditors need and what our business needs, and then to um, after we look at our income and our saving needs from there, prepare to see what we can give. And by the way, yes, thank you for including the church, but there are also other organizations. And as your pastor, the thing that is most important to me is that we are giving and that we are meeting the needs of those around us. And the church can do that in a beautiful way as a community that cares for one another and as a community that is reaching the next generation with faith in Jesus Christ, and we couldn't have had last Sunday and our confirmands and the building of our youth center without those gifts and those ministries. And so thank you. 
um, for the chance for Linda and Mike and I and the mentors um, themselves to watch the growth that happened. Um, you all got to see um, partly, you know, one of the of the Ebenezers of here we place how far we've come. Um, but when we were on the treat, the retreat together, the confirmands were flat out very loudly refusing to share their, I believe, their credo statements with anyone else outside of it because it was just too scary. And then step by step, we got to last Sunday um, where Jasmine started the whole thing out to share and, and to work through that fear in faith. And is that not the entire journey? And so adults, it's our turn today um, to work through fear, and, and that's real with money, um, of, of having enough to provide for our families and for what comes up. And so what is the next step of faith where you can do a stretch that you're uncomfortable with, but where you can trust that God is in control and will provide. And as you make these estimates, friends know that if something changes in the year, absolutely these, we can change what our estimate of giving was to meet that new reality. The entire point of this is that we are working with God to feel that much more of our salvation, for our fear to be melted into faith, into reassurance that God is in control and that God does provide. In closing, here are the questions from John Wesley that he asked of himself and his laity, and I will put that in white next time so you can see those better. Um, so in spending this money that I have been given, am I acting like I own it or am I acting like the Lord's trustee? Do we believe that we own our money and our finances, or do we believe that it is all a gift um, from God to be shared? What scripture requires me to spend this money this way? Can I offer up this purchase as a sacrifice to the Lord? Will God reward me for this expenditure at the resurrection of the just? I know that in preparing for this sermon alone, Abraham and I have had a very strong conversation with each other about the money that we're spending to eat whatever food we want whenever we want it. Um, and so we are now uh, not eating out and making all of our meals based on what we already have in our freezer and in our pantries because, quite frankly, with the pandemic, all of those habits of stockpiling and hoarding came back very strongly. And we're now in danger of things going bad because we're not getting to them. And so that is one way that we have together looked at this and, and how we will uh, move forward in, in a way that our money is more in line with our faith so that if someone ever looks at our checkbook or at our Venmo account or at our checking account, they will be able to see what we believe in and know that we are living um, what we say that we believe. And so I invite you into this call together. Um, and we do not go this road alone. There are those and ancestors, including John Wesley and all of those who have gone before us, that have helped show us that this is possible and have helped walk um, this road with us so that we can then, in turn, pass this on, as is our vision here at Glendale, to the next generation. And so as we come together, um, one of the best things that I love about faith and about being Christian is that God doesn't ask anything of us that God does not ask of God's self and first make possible um, to help us humans out. And so it is not a coincidence that we begin our giving in receiving, in receiving the love of God and Holy Communion. And one of my favorite parts about communion is that this is a sacrament, a meal of love. 
and it transition it transcends time and space so we are thinking about our siblings and christ in hong kong and that incredibly beautiful and powerful prayer that they are praying in their own perseverance of living a future reality in this very difficult present reality and so for all of those siblings in Christ all around the world and for all that have gone before us, the community of saints past, present, and to come in the future are all gathered together at this meal. And so as we prepare, we are first going to go into a time of prayer. And so Larry and Jim, if you would bring the prayer cards forward. Um, and then as we go into this time of prayer, I'd also like, Kim is going to uh, play for us. I'd like for us to begin naming those um, who have passed that we would like to celebrate their presence with us at this meal. And for those of you who would like, there are candles lit and you can come forward and light a candle in their honor and ring the bell. Um, in their name, and we are going to begin this time of prayer remembering the saints who are with us. And then we will move into a time of prayer and lifting up our joys and concerns, and then we will move into a time of receiving the bread and the cup. So for the saints who have gone before us, call out their names, light a candle, and ring the bell.
Jasmine and Miguel, if you will go ahead and begin to pass out the communion elements. And as we look to Ash and their prayers, and we look on these candles, we remember that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has come into being. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. God, for all of the saints who have gone before us, who show us your light, who help us to remember that the darkness has not overcome it, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for being Emmanuel, God with us. We give you thanks for emptying yourself and coming here to be with us, to show us what a life lived in faith, not in fear, looks like. We give you thanks for the way that you faced the darkness, for how on that night, night of betrayal, of torture, and of death, you made room for love. And in that love, you took bread, you blessed it, you broke it, and you gave it to your disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. How on that same night after the bread, you took the cup and after giving thanks to you, gave it to your disciples and said, take, drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. And so, God, in remembrance of your salvation, the way that you have saved us then, the way you save us now, and the way that you will continue to save us, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. We ask that you make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For it is in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, it is in the power of your Holy Spirit that this journey, that this life is possible now and always. Does everyone have a communion set. All right. Then let us, before we eat, lift up in prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving for John and Diane's grandson, Jeff, who have fully recovered from COVID. And prayers of comfort and peace for Linda's home church in Bethlehem United Methodist Church in Hutchison. Um, five members have passed away since August 3 in the past 10 days. For Jeff and for Bethlehem UMC, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Sally, we're keeping you in prayer too, um, and Dale as well for Sally's healing and recovery from a fall that left extensive bruising um, and for the pain medication that it can do its work as she continues to heal and regain her strength. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For our Glendale family who is unable to be here, Jim and Susan Ross, June Haas, Duane Meyer, Elaine Christensen, and June Haas, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Continued prayers of healing for Steve Peterson, John Scarbalis, Brad Remington, Lily Fett, Brian and Victoria's niece, Grace, Ross Graba and the fourth grader from Hidden Valley Elementary School. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. With these siblings of ours here at Glendale, with the siblings in Christ all around the world, we join together in praying, God, the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May we eat remembering that we serve a Savior who is whole, but who became broken, so that we who are broken might be made whole. May we take the cup remembering a Savior who is full, but who chose to empty himself, so that we who are empty may be filled. And at this meal, we remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. Ron, we remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, and the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, and the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. And since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy.
So we are going to move into a time, for those of you who have not already um, put your uh, estimate of giving in the offering as or have mailed it in, for those of you who mailed it in, it's in there. Um, please uh, do so now as we rise in body or in spirit to sing our closing hymn. And then if you would like to throw away um, your cup as well, Larry has a, um, a basket for that as well. chase down our estimates of giving to give a prayer over them, but our counters are already on task <laughs> counting them. So thank you. Um, people are really excited here to receive your gifts and begin planning um, ministry. And so just for all of the gifts that have been given, thanks be to God. <laughs> okay, Kofi. <laughs> Uh, times for today's announcement. Thank you to everyone signing their presence with our parking lot grid. Having an accurate record will help us respond quickly and safely if there is a known exposure. Uh, visitors, please leave us your contact information in the back of the worship center here so that we can extend a fuller welcome to you later in the week. Uh, survey from the city of Savage. These are the last two weeks to go to letstalksavage.com. Uh, this is an important moment for us to give our input as to where the greatest need in our community is for the incoming federal aid. Uh, directory. Mission Quest is still working to update our directory. Uh, get your landscape, pictures, and information to Barbara Moore. Thank you. Christmas cookies. Mark your calendar for the United Methodist Women's Cookie Sale on Saturday, December 11th. Please bake and freeze cookies for the mission fundraiser that will be from 10 a.m. to noon. And now our Boy Scout troop is here to invite us to join them in a mission over the holidays. Good morning. So we represent Boy Scout Troop 226 that meets here in your space. Thank you so much for that. It's a really uh, lovely place that we can be. Um, but as you can expect, uh, one of the, the 
interesting things that has happened in COVID is we have not been able to do one of the um, main values of our troop, which is a lot of service kind of things. So, um, for example, we have usually helped out with day and patch days. The city does a Santa's helper thing, Halloween party. Um, and so we haven't been able to go out and, and do some of those things. So we have a new project um, for a place that is near and dear to my heart. It's called the Toy Corner. Um, it is a nonprofit charitable organization. It opened in Savage in November of 2014. They got a very generous donation from a Prior Lakes, from the Prior Lakes Lions Club to get them started. And they ended up moving to Shakopee uh, at another church, at a church, St. John's Lutheran Church in fall of 2020 because they had outgrown the space that was here in Savage. Uh, they are open year round for parents and guardians to shop for their family every other month. They support uh, kids that are babies all the way up to 15 years old. And their mission is that they support needy families throughout Scott County by providing new and almost new toys, games, puzzles, crafts, books, stuffed animals for each child in the family. So when I go to volunteer there, I get to help the family shop, find things their kids are interested in, and they get to take giant bags of stuff for their families. Um, and so even though they are open year round, December is the busiest month because there's a lot of holidays that happen in December. And so that's where um, you guys get to come in and help with this project. We have a collection box for the month of November. We're accepting any new and or almost new items, especially we need things for teens. Some ideas are sports balls, Legos, Play-Doh, makeup, cars and trucks, curling or straight irons, blow dryers, Disney things, STEM, science toys, slash kits, dartboards, superheroes, and dolls. What the scouts will be doing once we receive these items is we use disinfecting wipes and the scouts will clean them and then they will deliver them to, for donating. For bigger items, we can arrange pickup in the kitchen, workbench, etc. So if uh, you have things at home that you want to go through your closets, um, what we just really ask, though, is that things are in nice condition that somebody else might want to play with. I know my own kids, uh, they used to donate things to my classroom, and it felt a little nicer because they could theoretically come visit it. Um, but what, what we're just looking for is things that are in nice shape. So um, if, you, if anybody even wants to donate some disinfecting wipes, we also um, have some brochures that are out um, in the entry way where the boxes and the information there's a website where you could find information if you uh, don't have that kind of stuff at home and you wanted to donate some uh, money there is a way to do that on the website and then other folks will do shopping um, but it's a, a very cool program and so thank you for letting us have a box here thank you in advance for anybody who has anything um, that can help and we'll just kind of hang out in the entry afterwards if anybody has a question All right, would you rise in body or in spirit? And I'm also remembering that this coming Wednesday is the open door food pantry distribution. So if you can be here at two, we'd love to have you um, as we share um, food with our community. We go forward into this week knowing that God is in control and that God is guiding us. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with you always, amen.